Hello everyone and welcome to Death's Gambit, or me talking over Death's Gambit. After three long years, the game's finally out, but well, it feels a lot longer for me, it feels more like five years. So after five long years, the game's finally out, this side-scrolling Dark Souls platformer. There's been a lot of those, there's Salty Sanctuary and Dead Cells, although Dead Cells was a Metrovania instead of Dark Souls, because... I, I don't know why I haven't played Dead Cells. I hear it's good, but I've been waiting for this, Death's Gambit. And uh, it's the most Dark Souls. I haven't actually gotten to sink my teeth into um, Salty Sanctuary. But as far as I'm concerned, this is the most Dark Souls, Dark Souls game uh, that exists. Uh, I wanted to get footage of the character creator, but I guess I didn't make it in time or I waited too long to get like the capture from the PS4 which is what this is which explains that giant death uh that uh death gambit logo yeah I didn't expect that to be there I would have used the stream footage but I wanted like footage that had the game's audio without me talking over it but um it's very Dark Souls, like, you got those, these little idols, I don't know if I'll sit at this one, I sat at it, it's basically a bonfire, you can mess around with your magic, it'll heal you, return your healing items, the, which is that little goat and feather down there, the plumes, it's basically Estus, more solid Estus, um, the character creator, while I couldn't get it in, it's very similar in layout to Dark Souls, color's a bit different. But it's more or less the same. It's also a lot simpler. You know, you can't, um, can't name your character. That's about all that's different. There's even a feature after you create it. Here's the UI menu. Pretty... It's, it's different enough, but still quite obviously Dark Souls. But, um, yeah, even down to, like, the gif you can choose. There's, um... I think a healing item, some bombs, a helmet, which is what I chose because it gave you, like, more vit, so why wouldn't I wear that? And a, uh, a necklace that didn't have any obvious use, which I believe one of the Dark Souls, if I'm not mistaken, Dark Souls 1 has something. Is that Dark Souls 1 or 2? Has something like that. But, um... Yeah, I can't remember if in Dark Souls it did anything, and I'm not far enough to know if it does anything here. It might just be a useless item to like waste time and take up space, which is fine, you know, you gotta have those every once in a while. Here I am killing everything, I think I'm grinding, or maybe I make misstep. Yeah, uh, I really enjoy it. It's, 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 it's neat, filling out my Dark Souls kick a little. I got stuck on a boss, it wasn't even like the main boss, I beat that boss. Actually, no, I didn't. That was like a mid-boss. I didn't even get to the boss. I watched, um, YouTube channel Super Best Friends do their little video of this. I say little, it's probably gonna get more views than this, and also it's most likely gonna be longer. But, um, yeah, they went straight for the boss, uh, the Owl King, which is the first boss, which I thought who I was fighting was, um, the Owl King, which that's who I thought the Owl King was. Uh, apparently that's not the Owl King, that's just some random schmuck who killed me so much that I started getting death-related exposition, which may actually be after this. Apparently if you, uh, die too much, you get... Well, you get long loading screens. That's another, that's a problem. Oh, here we go. We get to talk to our, uh, our hot uh, mom. Yes, she's, I was just... she's not my mom, she's someone else's mom, so she can be hot. Soon. She's also got, like, dark hair and, like... This, like, this moody face. I don't know, I like it. Right, also, it's, yeah. it was established earlier that she's a knight, so she's not just some random bimbo. She's she's probably very muscular under that garter belt. Garter belt? Girder. Girder? I don't know. I don't know women's clothing. As much as I probably come off as I do. But anyways, uh, for some reason, the PS4 version... Yeah, I don't think that was the video. If it was, then ignore my insane randomness, but it's, it stutters and freezes like it loads. Like, the first time that little death exposition happened, I was just in a room with, like, fancy pattern background, like, with one you get off of Google Images. So I thought it was a loading screen, but then it happened again, but this time with actual dialogue, so I thought, oh, 
I mean, I'm getting death-related expositions. There's me dying, and that happens a lot against this boss. And that's death. That little flying bird thing, that was death. But, um, I spent uh, a majority of this footage slash stream uh, throwing my head against the, the, this, this mid-boss, I guess, sub-boss, optional boss. There we go, that's the word. Uh, until I eventually grinded out two of the other classes' weapons. So there's hmm, one, two, three, four, I think six, seven classes. There's your standard knight with your standard long sword, and then there's like your heavy knight. This guy, I think the tank. Maybe the tank's the one with the halberd. Anyways, there's a tank, and he either has the great sword, which is different from the long sword, and someone with the halberd. I think the one with the halberd. No, the one with the halberd wasn't the tank. The one with the halberd was easy because it had like higher stats than most, although it was still spread out. And it had more items, which was weird. And then you have the rogue with the daggers and spell guy with a spell book. And then the guy I chose, which is the acolyte of death, which I thought was very interesting and different, if not a little high school edge. But it came with a scythe, and despite making fun of high school edge, I like scythes, so whatever. That being said, as I said before, I ended up grinding out long enough that I got two of the other classes' starting weapons. Uh, did I get a fourth weapon? No, I don't think I got a fourth weapon. I just got the three weapons, and I got so many halberds and uh, long swords. It's crazy. Halberd did a little, a lot of damage. It did more damage than the scythe. But the scythe goes through shields, and I guess because I started out as an acolyte of death, I had. My my starting magical ability was scythe. And if I unequip the scythe, I'm suddenly unable to use that ability, which is fine because that ability does the most damage the scythe can do, as well as stunning enemies, which is very helpful for little prick bosses like this. Now that being said, I still had a very hard time with this optional boss. I did go back and play it later on my own. I didn't beat it because I wanted to beat it on stream, but I did practice parrying, which I didn't know was a thing. Maybe I missed that tutorial with tombstones. Those little tombstones popping up with tutorials, much similar to Dark Souls, which has written messages for tutorials. But I don't think this game has online, so you won't see like player custom created tombstones that say amazing chest ahead, beware skeletons, hang in there, whatever. You know, Dark Souls memes. But, um. Yeah. It's, uh. I don't regret my decision, because now I have, like, three weapons. Since, like, two class weapons are easily grindable at the start. But, um. Yeah, very Dark Souls. There is two. Two things that stood out to me. In, um. In the game that's very different than Dark Souls. One is plot related, so that's to be expected. I don't expect it to copy the plot of Dark Souls. In fact, it has a bit more plot than Dark Souls. Um, and that's... You are a knight who, after a big battle, I assume, I haven't actually gotten far, so I don't know, Death decides to keep you alive and make you sign a contract in your blood that respawns you every time you die so you basically live forever as long as you hold that contract which is the important part because the contract is a actual item in your inventory which you may have seen before in this video with me quickly going in and out of the menu the little thing that looks like a contract or a deed or the declaration of independence whatever the little golden piece of paper if you equip it and use it a, a big bar pops up a big loading bar pops up that fills up as you hold it and death will come out about halfway and ask you do you really want to get rid of this because if you do the next time you die it'll be forever and that basically turns on permadeath mode you can turn on permadeath mode at any point in the game but only once obviously once you die you start over as the way with permadeath so that's interesting I'm not turning that on my first playthrough, and you know what? Subsequent playthroughs, I may never will, because I play Dark Souls games not for the challenge, but because they are interesting and fun and they look cool, despite its difficulty. Uh, the second biggest thing is that, oh look, the Vital Song Sword, that's one of the weapons that I ended up getting. Uh, the second one, since I already have the Halberd in this section of the footage. Um, what was it? 
Yeah, the uh, plume feather Estes thingies. Apparently, you can trade those in for uh, more strength. So each one gives you a 10% damage increase. But then you only have one. So I think while grinding out, grinding out, while bashing my head against this brick wall of an optional boss, I put most, if not all, of my plumes into a into my uh, strength. Uh, for reasons I will explain in a minute, but also, if plumes are Estes in this game, then this game has multiple Estes's. Because you start off with the golden plume, and there are differences. They're more or less the same that, in that they heal you, and you have the same amount regardless if you switch. So, I have zero because I put them on strength, but if I switch to the gold one, I would still have zero. The only difference so far between the two I have, the blue and the gold one, is that the gold one uh, heals at a- No, it has a casting speed. The heal is more or less instant. It has a casting speed of 1.5, while the blue one is slightly faster at a casting speed of 1.0, which may or may not uh, be a visible difference, especially if you're using it in the heat of battle, but whatever, it's better. The number is bigger, or in this case, smaller, which is also better. That being said, uh, when you die in this game, provided you're not in permadeath mode, yeah, see, there it is, the little contract is the first item. Um, instead of losing your souls, or what this game is called shards, uh, you lose a plume until you've lost all of your plumes. I've never died more than once, so I don't know if you die again, you lose them permanently, or if they just build up, or if they just stay there forever until you get them back. However, you can just get them back, or in the little bonfire statue, you can pay the amount that is required for your next level to re get the plume back. I don't know if it's one at a time, I don't know if it increases, I'm not stupid enough to test out the death mechanics. Maybe I should have if I was going to do this type of video, but um... Yeah, so like, say you're at level 1 and you need 50 to get to level 2, uh, then the shards required to get your plume back would be 50. That being said, if you're like level 10, and the next amount of shards you need to level up is like 220, then it would cost 220. That's how that works. However, I found out a little thing that's extremely broken and may get patched out at some point. I have no idea. I did find a typo, but that was in the character creator, so we won't even bother with that. And there's gl glitches. Uh, the Super Best Friends I saw play, apparent, I look like they were on PC, because I don't think this game's on Xbox. Maybe it is. I don't know. I should be doing my research. But, um, there is stuttering and frame rate on the PS4. So, uh, patches and fixes. All that might come... The thing that's broken is that if you put all of your plumes into yourself, so at this point I have found a plume upgrade that gave me an extra plume, so I had four, and I put all four into me to give me a total damage of 140%. If I die because I don't have plumes, I can't lose plumes. And I checked, I've checked multiple times after dying, having the plumes in me, the plumes are still in me, I still have four plumes, I'm still at 140%, I assume I can take those plumes out and use them again. Death can't take what's in you, only what falls out of you, and if you don't have plumes to fall out of, because they're in your butthole, he's not gonna take them. That's pretty, that's pretty broken, because that means death has no meaning. There's no risk of losing your shards, there's no worry about losing all of the sh or not shards, there's no risk of losing your plumes, there's no worry of spending all your hard on shards, getting your plumes back if you can't go back and get them on your death spot, that's a giant horse I was on its back, you need that to like do platform stuff, no, it's, you keep your damage increase from the plumes being in you, and you keep the plumes in you, it's, it, it's really busted. Granted, breaking the game didn't help me beat this guy. In fact, learning how to parry did. That's why I haven't played it yet. But like, it's it's crazy. So yeah, that's everything um I know about Death Gambit. I don't know. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I want to do more of these, actually. I'm gonna call this, like, 
how she talks about Death's Gambit and stuff coming up with a funny name. Cause I'm I'm running out of creative ideas for funny names most of the time. So I'm gonna find ways out. Like when I do visual novels, it's now how she reads this visual novel. Unless that visual novel has like a significant amount of let's play or play or gameplay. Even then I might just call it Let's Read. Or come up with a series name for fighting games so that I can just call it that and not have to come up with a funny name for Mortal Kombat for the five Mortal Kombats. Um, but I also did want to do like review critique types. I wanted to write them down. I actually had like a joke. The little bit at the beginning was supposed to be a lot longer, but I never managed to write it down and I forgot it. So, um, yeah. I don't, I lost my train of thought like immediately. That's probably why I don't do these kinds of things. That and like the crippling anxiety and nervousness I get from just straight up talking like this. Cause now it doesn't seem like I'm talking to myself. It's cause like I'm talking to a person. But anyways, that's Death's Gambit. I keep dying to this guy, but that won't happen. Uh, this is stream footage, even though it's also from the PS4. The stream will go out late. I wanted to get this out cause at least, you know, if I do like, a short 15 30 minute video people at least watch it as opposed to like an hour and a half live stream and i really like this game you know i want at least one person to like watch it or like know that i like it or maybe they like it and they want to see someone else like it and then we can be like friends or something i don't know but uh yeah 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 all right see ya